Hi, I'm Maurice Jones, president of Graceland Ministries. Today, we're gonna ask a question. And that question is this, should a Baptist follow the Calvinism of James White or the provisionism of Leighton Flowers? And that's a very important question for a Baptist because Baptists are a very large uh, denomination. So what we're gonna do is this, there's a debate from another website on a debate between Flowers and Dr. White. And we wanna highlight two sections. And mainly, these sections are going to deal with Romans 9. So really, the, the video should be, should a Baptist follow uh, James White's interpretation of Romans 9 or Leighton Flowers' interpretation of Romans 9? And of course, at Graceland Ministries, we're gonna say neither because they're both are lacking something, okay? So here we go for this noble purpose of bringing the world, his, the Messiah, and his message. Yet, for the most part, Israel is standing in direct opposition to their own Messiah and his gospel message, which does obviously lead one to ask, has God's word failed? Um, and I think you and I would agree that the reason the Israelites are standing in opposition to the gospel and rejecting their own Messiah is because God is actively hardening them. Like the verb you said, it's active hardening. We both agree with that. Um, he is, as Paul says, sending them a spirit of stupor, uh, just as Jesus spoke to them in parables to prevent them from understanding and believing. So what I want you to explain is what you feel is the difference between our views on this particular point, because I think we both affirm that God's active hardening of the unbelieving Israelites, but you seem to think that's hardening from birth. It's a natural condition from birth, whereas I obviously believe it's a judicial act of one who has freely rebelled. It's a, it's a judicial act of Israel specifically at this time in order to accomplish a greater redemptive purpose, yet you seem to assume, correct me, you seem to assume it's a natural condition from birth, this hardening, this inability to hear, see, understand, and turn to God. Okay, um, now, from a Baptist standpoint, this is very important about Israel, okay? Because if, if you look at the eschatology, uh, we got a video on the eschatology of, uh, uh, not, not on his entire eschatology, but we have a video relative to him in, in, in Matthew 24, relative to Leighton Flowers. Uh, so eschatology is very important. Israel is a part of eschatology. And so as a Baptist, uh, your eschatology should pretty much drive your soteriology. It can't be the other way around because you got too many guys out there with, you know, um, that, that preach the gospel, but their eschatology is horrible. So where does Israel fit? How does Israel play? So you got Romans 9. So now what Dr. Flowers is doing here, and here's, this is why as a, as a person trying to help a Baptist out there, I'm telling you, you should suspend judgment on what uh, Dr. Flowers is saying because he has not fully worked these things out because he keeps mixing uh, fluids here. He keeps going, you know, he keep, one minute he's, he believes in libertarian free will of Molinism, the next minute he throws in some Frankfurtian free will. And so this question he's gonna pose about Israel and how God now hardens Israel's uh, heart, actively hardens Israel's heart. This is not based on libertarian free will. That's not how PAP works. That's, how, that's not how Molinism works. That's not how middle knowledge works, okay? So that's the first thing we wanted to point out is that he's looking at this question and the way he's posing the question, Dr. Uh, uh, White should be confused because Dr. White is sitting there thinking, okay, I'm a B theory. In other words, I believe in the B theory of time. I'm a Calvinist. I know how God works according to the B theory of time, okay? Dr. Layton Flowers claims he believes in libertarian free will. So I need to see some libertarian free will in Romans chapter nine, which is a theory, which is the a theory of time. I need to see that, okay? But Dr. Flowers is not doing that because he seems to have this idea of libertarian freedom becoming or turning into Frankfurtian freedom, whereby you, you get the elimination of alternatives, okay? So that's why he's not really posing the question in a proper way, because technically at Graceland, we look at it this way. Should a Baptist follow uh, Calvinism and their B theory of time, okay? Or should we follow Leighton Flowers' idea of trying to merge Molinism with Arminianism, okay, which is based on the A theory of time of, of middle knowledge and the B theory of time with Arminianism. Now, I don't think he can merge the two, okay? He can't merge A and B. Until he merges A theory of time with B theory of time and get 
a consistent idea of free will, then, you know, Baptists can consider him, okay? But right now, I don't think he's worked these things out, okay? It can be done, but it's not being done by Dr. Flowers, okay? Now, the second thing we wanna look at in, in this video or in this debate between Dr. White and uh, uh, Dr. Flowers is they're gonna talk about Paul. So check this out. You said that Calvinists confuse the call of Paul with the call to salvation. As a former Calvinist, um, could you provide some examples of this from, from R.C. Sproul, myself, since I'm the one you're debating this evening, can you show, me, can you show anyone where I have ever made that, that uh, confusion? Um, I don't have any quotes available, but I can provide some quotes where I, I think pointing to Paul and the Damascus Road experience and the effectual nature of his calling is used quite often by Calvinists, and I would be glad to provide those okay. on my podcast at a later time or on my, my blog if you'd like me to okay. quote those. No, now would be the time. If you're going to make a claim in your presentation, which he did, it's in his opening statement, Calvinists confound, they confuse the various calls of God. You'd be ready to be challenged by your opponent to provide citations for this claim. These These... These little tiny jabs that White is getting in here, if Flowers isn't careful, they're going to add up. That, that's not what I was asking. Very clearly, I have distinguished between call, Paul's call to be an apostle and the fact that he was set apart from his mother's womb uh, and recognize that the one demands the other, but we recognize the difference. You say we're conflating them. Is that your argument? Yes, I believe you, you think that God is, in some ways, saving men in the same way that he, he saves and calls out his apostles because he has a remnant to accomplish his purpose through through Israel. And his promise will not fail. So, for example, in Jonah's situation, um, God could have just used irresistible means to make him want to go, but he uses a big fish. He could have just irresistibly made Paul want to believe and, and do what he wanted him to do, but he uses a blinding light. And I think we all agree he uses means, but in my, my perspective, I think that means actually accomplish what the scriptures say that they accomplish. In other words, but God means failed. are unto faith. But, but he could have failed. Paul could have said no, yes? Um, he, he, able but not willing. Calvin sees that term all the time. He's able, but he wasn't willing. Because but God he could him. have. He was able, but not willing. Okay. So if he had, then God would have had to have found someone else other than Paul. Well, I'm not denying God's foreknowledge. I'm not denying God's abilities to know his, what his plans are. And again, so if God knew, then he couldn't have, right? I'm sorry? If God knew, then he couldn't have. Or God's foreknowledge. Could again, just being super picky here, but uh, if... Okay. Um, once again, why are they doing this? Why? Okay. Why do you have two men, okay, using a system? One has the tulip system, the other one has provisionism, okay, debating over something that's found in the Bible. It, it doesn't work like that. If you read the passage and you look at the story, Paul is not going around, or Luke is not writing in the book of Acts, that Paul is either uh, determined, okay, or Paul has libertarian free will. Because when you read the story, Paul is going out, you know, breathing, uh, you know, indignations against God's people. Okay, and the Bible wants, if God wants to know with Paul and Jesus wants to know with Paul, why are you kicking against the goats? Why are you doing this? That doesn't fit with provisionism, and nor does it fit with Calvinism. You got a guy who's kicking against the goats. Why are you doing this? Jesus has to appear to him, and Jesus has to say, "Why are you persecuting me?" That's how you have to let the Bible drive whatever ism you want to hold to or believe in. You can't let your ism drive this. And so you got these two guys debating and they both look ridiculous here. And, and watch what White, Dr. White says to him. So if the Apostle Paul would have said no, okay, if he had libertarian freedom, okay, and if he would have said no, well, God ha would have had to go on and get someone else. But that, that's dumb because the question you got to ask now is who, would, who was God going to get to replace Paul? Because Apostle Paul says, I was one born out of due season. <laughs> he was called for that specific purpose. <laughs> Come on, Graceland, I'm telling you, Graceland Ministries, we, we don't sit there and try to pick a side. We try to get you to read the word of God and understand the word of God before you start doing all these isms and everything, 
Okay, I know you look at our videos and you want to know, like, you know, where, where are you here and are you over there? No, we don't do that at Graceland Ministries. We look at people go, you should be over here, you should be over here, and we say, no, you should be sitting your butt down, reading the Word of God, because that stuff makes you look stupid. I wish he would have asked me that question. Who else was going to find? Paul listed Philippians, his whole lineage. Where he, who else he was going to find? And, and, and as a matter of fact, that's something that process theology says. That's a Lewis Ford thing again. I hate to keep bringing up Lewis Ford and process theology in my videos, but that's how Lewis Ford works. He believes in the historical contingencies. If God can't find one thing, then God has to go find another thing. Okay? That, that's the process theology's argument. And, and, and their view of omniscience is really bad. Okay? Because they believe God shares his creative power. And so that question there is a question that Dr. White can ask a process theologian. And a process theologian would have a process answer. But he's asking it to a guy who holds to uh, uh, the Molinist position. And they're going around debating over something that did not even occur. We know how the story goes. We know exactly what God says. Hey, I'm not going to labor this point anymore. But as a, as a Baptist out there, I'm telling you, uh, Dr. Flowers has not worked these things out. He has to take the A theory of time, the libertarian free will, okay, and, and he's gonna have to merge it with Arminianism who carries a B theory of time to be able to do what he wanted to do, okay, to be able to do what he wants it to do. He just can't simply say, you know, I believe in libertarian free will, and then when it comes to Romans 9, I'm gonna shift and move towards Frank Ferdian free will, okay, because later on in the debate, Watch what, watch what Dr. Uh, White says to him and watch how he brings up William Lane Craig. Watch this. If I were up against Flowers, I'd really keep trying to bring him back to Romans 9. Why? And force him to do something that he didn't really do Why? Uh, much of at all, which is exegete Romans 9. The topic question is what it is. If, if Flowers is correct, then he needs to be able to, from the text, show that the text teaches his particular view. My questions would be more bringing him back to elements of Romans 9 that perhaps don't agree with his interpretation um, from, from the opposing viewpoint. And uh, so I don't know if I would spend a whole lot of time on this. Could have been invalidated, right? Well, God Marks foreknows this. the free choice. He doesn't foreknow his determination. And that's the, the distinction philosophically that I really don't want to go down that road. Not because I, I can I, understand I, that, yeah. I get let William Lane Craig take that one. <laughs> Uh, he, he won't do it either. Um, <laughs> you, um... Okay, whoa, a shot. A shot taken by White at Craig, okay? So here's Flowers admitting like, hey, I don't understand it because Flowers just lied on middle knowledge. That's not how middle knowledge works, okay? And Dr. White is correct. Dr. White is correct when he says, hey, Craig can't help you either <laughs> because that's a problem. That is a problem for the middle knowledge viewpoint. Watch this now. You ready for this, guys? That's also a problem for Calvinism, okay? And the only way to solve this problem is you're going to have to put the A theory of time and the B theory of time together before you can work out these issues. And White hasn't done it. Dr. Craig hasn't done it. And, of course, Dr. Flowers haven't done it, okay? It can be done. Lewis Ford was on the verge of doing it. Graceland Ministries, we can do it, okay? Well, watch this. You, well, you won't. Um, you, you said that you can't trust a God who has two wills. Uh, God said thou shalt not murder, right? Correct. Is that the will of God? Yes. Um, okay, White is setting a garden path here. These are setup questions, Flowers. You know, make sure you don't get pinned. Um, in Acts 4, 27 and 28, was the early church wrong to pray and to confess that what Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Jews and the Romans did God's hand and purpose predestined to occur, which was specifically the murder of the only innocent man uh, who has ever lived. Yeah, I, I wrote a blog article on this, the three main texts that Calvinists often refer to, um, Genesis chapter 50, the selling of the brothers, um, obviously Israel um, um, uh, being hardened as, as Pharaoh was hardened is a big one. Um, and then again, the, the crucifixion of Christ. And as I've reminded, in my podcast and other places, we do believe God determines some things. God does step into human history, and very similar to, to what maybe even compatibilistic arguments are and how God works these things out through judicial hardening, that he brings about his purpose. So he blinds the Israelites in order to do what? To ensure the crucifixion. 
And so, yes, God does determine some things, but it's for a redemptive purpose, like the, like the, hide, like the cop hiding himself. It's for the redemptive plan. It's not to condemn them because they too could be saved. It's not, it's not a, a condemning from birth to death. Was Herod condemned for his actions in the death of Christ? I would assume so. Pontius Pilate? I would assume so, yes. Was it eternally God's intention for the cross to take place? Well, I think the word intention gets misapplied um, because when we, we say intention, I, you talk about God having the intention of the evil happening, where I talk about God's redemptive intention in the evil happening. And so there's a distinction. Michael Brown and you go around and around about this too, where God is redeeming a, an evil for good, and he's, he's, in, he's taking their evil intention and turning it around. He's redeeming that evil intention for a good thing. And in his meticulous providence, he's able to do that. It, but in, in his sovereign, sovereign abilities, he's able to do that. But that doesn't mean, from my perspective, that we deny human responsibility in the ability to respond and make ch real choices within time and space. Let, let me try it again. Was it God's <laughs> intention for yeah. an eternity that the Son of God become incarnate and die upon Calvary's tree? I don't think you answered that question. Well, he didn't. I'm just defining the word intention. And All right. Yes, use, would, if you'd right. like to use, was it his will? Was it the, the, in, the choice of the triune God? Use whatever term you wish. But did God intend an eternity past for the second person of the Trinity to enter into flesh and die upon yes. Calvary's tree? And, and that's what I was attempting to answer in saying that proof that God uses determinative, if you want to call them that, determinative means to bring about the redemption of all mankind does not prove that God also uses deterministic means to bring about all the sins that need redeeming. That's my So from Flower's perspective, it is advantageous to press the point about clarifying from your particular perspective. You know, you have to make sure that you're not being pinned by your interlocutor. And James White is at this point uh, trying to pin Yes, and he has <laughs> pinned it because now watch this because Dr. Flowers admitted, you know, I need to bring Craig here to help me out here. Okay, so now Dr. White is going like, okay, so you don't really understand middle knowledge. So watch what I'm going to ask you. Okay, okay I'm going to ask a question, okay, that I know Wimley and Craig knows the answer to because Wimley and Craig has an answer to, but I know you don't have an answer to. I'm going to ask you the most basic question, okay, and I'm going to watch you squirm. Okay, now watch what happens. Now, Dr. Flowers moves from, if you watch him, he moves, if you watch his videos and lectures and everything, once again, he moves from libertarian free will to Frankfurtian free will. And now he says, you know what? We got some, some determinism in there too. <laughs> okay, we can throw some sovereignty in there too. Okay, and because you can still be that way and, and, and you can still have free will. Yes, if you follow simple foreknowledge, you can, <laughs> okay? Okay, if you a theological fatalist, you can. What are you, Dr. Flowers? Okay, what are you? And, 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 and if I wish, once again, I wish White would have asked me that question because here's what Craig would have said to him because I understand Craig. I know Craig. I read Craig, okay? Watch what Craig would have said to Dr. White. Craig, and, and by the way, this is the first time I watched this video. This is the first time we at Graceland Ministries looked at this video, okay? I'm going to tell you what Dr. Craig would have said to Dr. White. He would have said this. Dr. White, let me ask you this question. Okay, according to your view now, God makes that decree before he creates this world. Okay, and so Dr. Craig says, that's what makes Molinism or that's what makes middle knowledge better than Calvinism is because, watch this now, God has middle knowledge. And God says, I know what you would do, okay? And because God has that middle knowledge of what you would do, then God makes this decree, watch this now. Then he makes his decree then he creates an actual world, okay? And from creating that world, he now has free knowledge and he's able to now weekly actualize situations and circumstances to get his absolute will. See, Dr. Craig would say this, according to Calvinists and according to simple foreknowledge, for example, God was lucky, God created a world and like, boom! I'm, I'm, if the decree was made before the creation of the world without middle knowledge then, God is, finds himself, especially from the, for, the simple foreknowledge point of view, God finds himself in a world, okay, that he, he doesn't know what's going on. And, and Craig would have just, Craig would have been, Craig would have eaten James White alive if he would have asked that question to a guy who really understood uh, middle knowledge. And Craig would have dropped 1 Corinthians 2 8 on and Craig would have gone out of his way. And then, and then what? But this guy realized that Leighton Flowers doesn't know anything about 
middle knowledge and whatever, and he asked a dumb question like that, and that this guy has to retreat now to simple forelogic or theological fatalism, which we have a video on him uh, hating, hating now, because Craig proved that theological fatalism doesn't work, logically. Okay, but that's how Dr. Flowers is. So my only thing is, is because we try not to take sides and things like that. We try to explain the word of God to people and we try to get people to understand the word of God. So I'm just saying, I would suspend my judgment on provisionism just yet. At least you know what Calvinism is. Okay, at least you know how Calvinism works. Now, there, there's some things that Dr. James White says in here that kind of scares me as well that Calvinists don't really say. Okay. But anyway, that's not the purpose of this video. We just wanted to say, hey, is this an alternative as a Baptist? Should I follow this? And I'm saying, no, hold on, hold on, okay? Because Dr. Uh, Flowers hasn't worked this thing out. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, we pray that uh, if you learned something, once again, just hit the like button or subscribe, okay? But anyway, we hope you have a great day, a great night, and peace to you guys. Love y'all. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more from Graceland Ministries, please subscribe, share, and support us financially online using the links in the description.